I'm financial expert and New York Times bestselling author, Nicole Lappin. And I'm Magnify, the AI assistant that powers the Magnify app. And we are your money assistants. On the show, we help people overcome financial setbacks and meet their money goals. So here's what we're gonna do. First, you'll hear me talk to a guest about their relationship with money and their financial dreams. And then I'll provide a personalized game plan developed by the most cutting edge financial technology. If you want us to be your financial assistants, listen to the end of the episode to hear how. Until then, this is who we'll be assisting today. Hi. Um, so my name is Susan, and I make about $65,000 a year. I have $30,000 in savings and am debt free. My money goal is that I would like to start investing. But I've never done it before. And I'm not, I'm not even sure where to start. So, Susan, we're going to put your money assistant to work soon, but we can't start there. We have to start with your story and how money has played a role in that story. So let's do a little word association game. I'm going to start with a word and then you tell me the first word that comes to mind, starting with retirement. So exciting. Investing. So stressful. Debt. Triggering. Savings. Hard. Money. Scarce. Okay, so overall, your associations with money uh, feeling pretty negative. Would you agree? Oh, I mean, I don't think of money as something that's negative. It's, you know, quite positive. I'd like more of it. Sure, but it sounds like some of the money moves that would help you build wealth invoke these feelings for you of anxiety. Is that fair? Like, what did you say? Stressful for investing hard for savings? Like, where does that come from? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I just feel like I never have quite enough money. Like most of my life, I've been paycheck to paycheck. And I don't really know how it happens. I've worked since I was 14. I have a good job. I've asked for raises every few years. And still, I've just never reached a point where I feel like I don't have to worry about money. Yeah, the not worry about money level rich is big money. I mean, for me, I still worry about money, even though I feel really comfortable and I've made my financial health a priority for a couple decades now. So that feeling of just not having enough, is that why you've not invested before? Yeah, I guess. I also just don't know anything about it. My family never talked about money. I'm not sure if my parents ever invested in the stock market, but if they did back then, they definitely didn't talk to me about it. And so I I just, I don't even know where to get started. So you've never invested? No. Never ever? Nope. You know, a lot of people think they've never invested, but they actually have. Do you have a 401k? My company offers one, but I don't use it. Wait, your company is offering you a 401k, but you've never opted in? No. Do they offer a match? I think so. So you don't want free money? <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I definitely do. But it's not really free money. I mean, the 401k contributions would come out of my paycheck. And like I said, I don't feel like I have money to just throw away. I hear you, but it's not throwing money away. That money comes back to you and then some in retirement. And if your company does a match, then that is free money. So homework number one for you, Susan, is to talk to your HR department about opting into their 401k program. Even beyond the free money element, it's a good baby step into the investing world because your company will do the investing for you. So homework number one, can you do that? Yes, I can definitely do that. And tell me, what kind of work do you do, Susan? I'm an account executive at a sales company. And how old are you? I'm 41. Cool, cool. I'm not just taking a poll. That's very helpful for me to know as we talk about what kind of investment strategy is best for you. So just for an example, as you get closer to retirement, you'll want to make sure your investing strategy is more and more conservative. Because as it sounds like you know all too well, Susan, investing does come with risk of losing money. And so you want to lower that risk as you get closer to retirement, because that's around the time that you're going to really need that money most. So you've gone 41 years without wanting to invest. Why do you want to start now? Well, I'm starting to think more seriously about retirement, and I want to make sure I have enough saved up to actually retire and to enjoy retirement, too. 
I've been working since I was 14 and all throughout, I've been stressed about money. I don't want to be stressed about money and retirement too. I love that. Well, you are smart to be thinking this way and you're never as young as you are today. Your parents probably told you the same. A penny saved is a penny earned, all that BS that we heard growing up. But that's not accurate anymore. First of all, with inflation, a penny saved is not a penny earned. Historically, inflation hovers around 3%. Of course, it went up to 9% during the COVID craziness, but let's just say that inflation will be 3% for the immediate future. That means a penny saved is 3% less than a penny earned. But the stock market gives you that opportunity to grow your money in a way that will outpace inflation. Historically, the stock market grows around 8% year over year, so that will actually turn those pennies into dollars. Let's get started. Right. In order to start investing, you're going to need to open a brokerage account. This is the only place where you can invest in the stock market. You can't buy Apple stock at the Apple store and you can't buy Apple stock at your bank. Your one-stop shop for investments will be your brokerage. With me so far? Yeah. Uh yeah, so far, so good. So what are my options for brokerages? Well, there are a few different kinds of investing accounts that you can open within your brokerage. The most basic is just a general brokerage account. Within a brokerage account, you can buy investments, you can sell investments. If you sell the investment at a profit, you're going to have to pay tax on that profit. There are a lot of different financial companies that offer brokerage services like Magnify, home of the investing assistant that you're going to be talking to soon. You also have the option of opening a retirement account within a brokerage. So unlike your 401k that your employer opens up for you, you can open up your own retirement account. The reason you might choose a retirement account versus just a traditional brokerage account is because retirement accounts have special tax perks. A common retirement account is an IRA, which stands for Individual Retirement account. There are two flavors of IRAs. There's the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA. I know this is starting to feel like a nesting doll of accounts, but stay with me. When you fund a traditional IRA, that contribution happens before the income tax calculation is applied. So basically, you get to count that contribution against your income taxes, but you do have to pay taxes on your IRA when you take the money out of your account in retirement. Checking in again. Still with me? Yep. Cool. So in contrast to that, Roth IRA contributions happen post-tax. So Roth IRA contributions do not help you shrink your taxable income. However, because you already pay taxes on that money that goes into the Roth IRA, you don't have to pay taxes on that money when it comes out because you already paid those taxes. So whether you want to do a Roth IRA or a traditional IRA really depends on whether you think you're going to be in a higher tax bracket when you retire or not. If you want to open an IRA, you can do that from certain brokerages, Magnify doesn't have IRAs yet, but other brokerages like Vanguard, Charles Schwab, Fidelity all do. Okay, so what do you think I should do? I think the best way to start right now is to just open a standard brokerage account and look into an IRA as step two. There are some rules around what you can put into an IRA and when you can take that money out. And I think when you're learning, it's better to just start with the option that has less rules. Yeah, sounds good. So creating a brokerage account is pretty easy, probably the easiest part of this whole situation. First, you'll fill out an application, which will be very easy. You'll need some sort of ID, like a driver's license, your social security number. Depending on which company you choose for your brokerage account, you might also get some questions about your risk tolerance, your income, your retirement goals. That's so the brokerage account can really understand who you're going to be as an investor. So when I open a brokerage, will they check my credit? Most of the time, no. So opening a brokerage account shouldn't affect your credit score in any way. Okay. It might take a couple of days for your account to be approved, or it might be ready to roll right away, TBD. But once you open the account, the next step is putting some money in there, and Magnify is going to have a recommendation for how much you should put in, Susan. So I'll hold off on that for right now and just say you're transferring some amount of money from your savings to your brokerage. Most brokerages will have a system that allows you to transfer your money into a new brokerage account from your bank account online. But you can also do it old school. You can write a check to the brokerage company. Each company will have their own set of instructions for how to make out a check to the brokerage, which you can find on their website or give customer service a call. 
I think I'll just do it online. Yep, that's what I do too. So you can authorize your bank to transfer the money within your brokerage account. You'll see that within your brokerage account, there is gonna be a button that says something like add funds to your brokerage account. And from that button, most brokerages will be able to link out to your bank. So in most cases, you're not gonna have to go through a two-step process of first talking to your brokerage and then calling your bank. Normally you can do this all from within your brokerage's online portal. Okay. So whatever money you transfer from your savings to your brokerage account will be available to invest within a few days. Now this step is super, super important. You need to actually invest that money. The question of what to invest in we'll get to in a sec with Magnify, but I just wanna underline this point. People will put money into their brokerage account and think, amazing, I'm an investor, I'm the next Warren Buffett, but they actually haven't invested anything yet. So it will just be sitting there in a settlement fund. What's a settlement fund? Oh, it's like a brokerage limbo. It's the place where your uninvested money sits in your brokerage account. To make things even more confusing, some brokerages do offer a perk where they'll invest your money sitting in the settlement account into a money market account where that money is going to make a little more interest while it's just sitting there waiting to be while it's just sitting there waiting to be invested. But the best move is to actually just invest it. Okay, so how do I actually do that? The newer brokerages like Magnify have a much easier interface to navigate than some older brokerage platforms. So the newer brokerage will have a search bar where you can search for a company and the page for that company will come up with the company's ticker. The ticker is just a short nickname that the stock market uses to refer to the stock. Like the Apple ticker, for example, is AAPL. These newer brokerages will allow you to invest in fractional shares, which I find way simpler and just overall better for newbie investors investors. Let me explain that by actually telling you about the opposite. Say you have a hundred bucks in your brokerage account and you want to invest that in Apple. At the time we're chatting, Susan, one share of Apple is about 180 bucks. Some older brokerages will require that you invest one share at a time, meaning because you only have a hundred bucks in your brokerage account and Apple stock is 180 bucks, you don't have enough money to invest. Boo, sad, the worst. But some of the newer investing platforms allow you to invest in fractional shares, meaning you don't have to buy a full share. You could buy half a share, you could buy a quarter of a share, or however much of one share you want to buy. So on those newer brokerages like Magnify, you'd be able to invest your $100 in Apple, even though you don't have enough money to buy one full share of Apple. So what the process of investing actually looks like will depend on the interface of your brokerage account. But top level, you'll search for a company, input either how much money you want to invest or how many shares you want to buy, and then you'll tell your brokerage account to execute the investment, and that is it. So do you feel good about opening a brokerage? Oh, and don't forget about your 401k homework. Yes, I think I can take myself through the steps of opening up the account. And I understand that buying the stocks is an important step. But what stock should I buy? That, Susan, is the perfect intro for your money assistant. Let's bring Magnify on. Hi, I'm your AI investing assistant powered by Magnify. And yes, I'm AI. I'm engineered to answer your biggest investing questions and help you make your money work for you. Hi, Susan. Hello, Magnify. What are your investing goals? I'd like to start investing so that I can have a comfortable retirement. All right. You are 41? Correct. Okay. You should strive to have 10 to 15% of your pre-tax income, including employer contributions, every year toward retirement. It is recommended you have saved around 10 times your average annual salary by the time you reach age 65. How old do you want to be when you retire? Uh, I guess 67, if possible. Okay. How much do you have saved for retirement? I have 30000 in savings. Okay. How much do you make a year? $65,000. Okay. Are you single? Yes. How much do you currently contribute toward retirement? zero right now. So we're going to fine tune that number together, Susan. Let's say $10,000 a year just for now. Okay, sure. Okay. Based on factors including expected social security, the state you'll retire in, and the wealth needed to maintain your current standard of living, you'll likely need $612,600 by the age of 67 to retire. With an annual investment of 
$30,000 and contributions of $10,000 each year, the chances of achieving your retirement goal of $612,600 is 63%. It is unlikely that you will reach your goal by 67 years old. Do you want a recommendation on how to improve your chances? Yes. Okay. Here are three options to improve your retirement plan. You could increase the amount you contribute to retirement per year from $10,000 to $11,147. You could adjust your retirement age from 67 to 69, or you could invest in an optimized portfolio. What's the option for increasing my retirement contributions? You could increase the amount you contribute to retirement per year from $10,000 to $11,147. I don't know how feasible that is, to be honest. But I'd rather at least shoot for that than retire at almost 70. Okay, your savings has been adjusted from $10,000 to $11,147. With your initial investment of $30,000 and contribution of $11,147 each year, your chance of hitting the retirement goal of $612,600 is 75%. If you are satisfied with your chance of success, I can create an optimized portfolio. Yes. Can you, can you show me that portfolio? Okay. Yes. An optimized portfolio would include... 39% SPY, an S&P 500 ETF, 26% AGG, an aggregate bond ETF, 18% IEFA, a developed markets fund, 12% BNDX, an international bond ETF, 3% IEMG, an emerging markets ETF, 2% VWOB, an emerging markets ETF. Thanks, Magnify. All right, Susan, I know that's a whole lot of numbers and letters and all the things, but don't worry, that info isn't going to go anywhere. I'm going to send you a list of all these stocks after we chat, and you can also listen back to this as many times as you want before it starts to feel comfy. Now, I know I also said we would double click on how much you should be contributing to retirement per year. Right. So, Susan, like you said, you've been working since you were 14 years old, so you deserve a retirement. But because retirement will be here before you know it, you can't mess around with retirement planning at this point. Like Magnify mentioned, you're going to need at least 600 grand in retirement, and you have 30 grand saved right now. So we need to kick it in high gear. We need to start cooking with gas. So let's think about what other biggie expenses you're going to have in retirement. Do you rent or do you own a home? I own my home. Great. And do you think you'll have it paid off by the time you retire? If all goes according to plan. Okay, also great. Typically, I recommend that people put 15% of their income toward their end game or their future goals. Magnify projected that you'll have a 75% chance of meeting your retirement goals if you put away 11,147 bucks a year. That's more than 15% of your salary. That's like 17% of your salary. But again, it is go time now. So in order to live that stress-free life in retirement that you want and deserve so much, you're going to have to stick with the high your retirement contributions right now. Um, Do you keep a budget right now? I know I need to spend less than I make, but I don't have anything formal. I think having something a little more formalized would be helpful for you. Uh, What I could do is take your 65K a year, take into consideration your take-home pay after taxes, and then subtract from your take-home pay all of your required expenses like your mortgage, your groceries, utilities, car payments, if you have them, and this 11 grand for retirement. If doing this math makes you realize that now you're allocating more spending than you have money to spend, you'll need to make some compromises, unfortunately. Can you negotiate your cell phone bill to make it lower? Are there any big expenses that you could shave down? And remember, if you do open up a 401k and your employer does match, then maybe your employer will be ponying up part of that 11 grand. So again, your HR department is the right place to start here. Do you feel good about putting together a budget? Yes, I can try to do that. 
Amazing. So to recap, you're going to make yourself a quickie budget that includes contributing this $11,147 to your retirement account. You're going to open up a brokerage account and you have a first draft of a portfolio to help get you started. And you're also going to talk to your HR department about opening up a 401k and figuring out whether your company matches. That's going to be really important if they're a contributor to all of this. How does that sound? That's That does sound good to me. I've, I know I've said this a few times, but I just never feel like I've had enough money. Um, but I think what would be most helpful for me actually is to make the budget you recommend. So I know whether or not I actually do have the money that I need. And that feels like a really good place to start. Along with the brokerage and the 401k. Yeah, yes, that too, I promise. Great. So while I don't believe in all the woo-woo money manifestation magic stuff, it is true that money is a mindset. And in order to get into the market and stay in the market, you're going to need to have confidence in your decision making. So repeat after me. I will invest in myself. I will invest in myself. Do the work. Do the work. And meet my financial goals. And meet my financial goals. Money Assistant is a production of Money News Network. Money Assistant is a sponsored podcast by Magnify. Magnify is the AI designed to help you invest. Yes, you. Advisory services are offered through Magnify LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Mutual funds and exchange traded funds, ETFs, are sold by perspective. Please consider the investment objectives, risks, changes, and expenses carefully before investing. The perspective, which contains this and other information about the investment company, can be obtained by the fund company or your financial professional. Be sure to read the perspective very carefully before you decide whether to invest. This is a sponsored podcast paid for by Magnify LLC. I'm a client of Magnify LLC, so this should be considered an endorsement or testimonial. Magnify LLC is a client of Money News Network LLC, so I do have an incentive to promote this client. The testimonials provided may not represent the experience of other clients and are not a guarantee of future performance or success. Opinions expressed in this program do not necessarily reflect those of Magnify LLC. The topics discussed and opinions given are not intended to address the specific needs of any listener. Magnify LLC does not offer legal or tax advice. Listeners are encouraged to discuss their financial needs with the appropriate professional regarding your individual circumstance.